this video, let us look at how we can implement text to SQL or text to SQL using OpenAI or GPT 4.0 as the LLM. Right? I'll be using an SQL Lite database where I have structured data stored. So first let us look into what is this text to SQL or text to SQL task. So this is a task in natural language processing where the goal is to automatically generate SQL queries from natural language text. That is the idea over here. So for example, you have a relational database like this. So this is a simple bike store uh, relational database. So the idea is that you have data in tables over here. So the, uh, this uh, bike store relational database basically has details of the various stores where various bikes are being sold from different brands and customers come to these stores and they order these bikes via their staffs who are present in the stores, right? So this is a relational database. So here, uh, you know, you want to actually interact with this database in a natural way using natural language instead of directly writing SQL or SQL queries. That is the idea. Okay. So let's see how we can implement that. Let's go to our collab notebook. So the first thing to do over here is that, uh, you know, you need to actually create a SQL Lite database to store your tabular data. Okay. So this database, I downloaded uh, the C, uh, CSV files from here. So for example, you have these various uh, tables over here like brands, right? Uh, you have brands, stocks, products, categories, staff, stores, orders, order items, customer. Okay. And in each of these tables, you have uh, values. For example, in the brands, you have these nine brands basically, right? Similarly, in each of the other data set, uh, you will have in each of the other CSV, basically the CSV represents these tables. So what I'm doing over here is that I am, I have downloaded those files and I have put it over here. Okay. And I'm actually now creating the SQL Lite in memory database over here. Okay. Assuming you have an SQL Lite database, which is already present, you can directly connect to that. Okay. What if your database is different? What if you have MySQL database? What if you have Oracle database? Now, depending upon the database, you need to figure out how to actually connect to them using the various Python libraries. Okay. So this part is actually creation of this particular SQL Lite uh, library in memory. So for that, what you need to do is that you need to install, uh, sorry, uh, install SQL Lite previously and then import it. If it is not installed, now uh, you import SQL Lite over here. You read in the various CSV files using pandas. Okay. And then what you do is that for each of these CSV files, you are now creating tables in the SQL Lite 3 or SQL uh, Lite database okay called bike store dot db so that is what is done over here now you can look at each of these categories right you can look at these uh, each of these csv files just to see what are present over here right so in categories you have these children's cat uh, bicycles comfort bicycles and so on right and um, in brands you have these nine brands okay similarly you have these various stores at various locations so this is based out of us um, then stocks of each store for each store for the product. What is the stock which is present over there staffs? So basically this is a relational database for you to practice your SQL queries. Okay, but I'm just using it over here to explain this concept of text to SQL. Okay, so I've created this database over here. So that is the first step, right? Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm also installing a, a SQLite schema over here for actually to extract the schema of this database. Now, why is this schema important? I'll come to that. So in text to SQL, we have, um, you know, a couple of steps. The first step is that we create the database or if the database is already available, that's fine. Right. Then we need to get the schema of the tabular data. Okay. Then how are we going to use the LLM over here? We'll create a system prompt to take the user question as input and generate an SQL query. But this particular LLM also needs to know about the 
payable schema for you to generate the SQL query. So that is why we need to get the schema. Okay. And once you get the SQL query, which has been generated by the LLM, you can run it against the database and get the results. Then you can send the results back to the LLM to get the response to the user question. That is the idea. So you are giving a natural language as input and you are getting tabular SQL query generated. And using the LLM, this SQL query is run against the database. You are getting the results and then you are sending it back to the LLM to get a response to the user question. Now you can also do this using libraries like Langchain and other thing. They have SQL agent, but if you don't want to use them, you can use this approach, what I'm showing over here. Okay. So now I'm getting the schema and if you uh, sprint the schema out, it looks like this. It comes out in a JSON output like this, right? So next step, what I'm going to do over here is that I am going to create the system prompt. Okay. Uh, so how do I create this system prompt? This is very important. Okay. So I can actually create the system prompt by saying that you are an expert SQL uh, generator agent and you, uh, you can do SQL generation using the schema and so on. What I did over here is that I used Claude dot AI. Okay. And I asked Claude dot AI over here. This is the free, this thing, Claude, uh, anthropic Claude AI, um, this thing on the interface. So I asked over there, give me a system prompt for SQL light SQL query generation. Now, if it was Oracle, I would have said, give me a system prompt for Oracle generation, Oracle query generation. Okay. If it is for my SQL, then I would have asked like that. So it actually neatly gives me a SQL generation prompt like this. Okay. So I copied that prompt over here. Suppose you are well versed with SQL uh, light. You are very well versed with all the SQL. Light. You can also write this prompt. Okay. So this prompt talks about how to generate an SQL query, right? This is the system prompt. It talks about what is the core objective. The core objective is to generate precise, efficient and secure SQL light queries, optimize the query performance and so on. And there are some query generation guidelines. And then what I do over here is that in the end, I say that, you know, this is an example query template. So output should be in this format. And then what I say over here is that, you know, do not start with uh, this SQL. And I say, do not make up new table and column names. Use only this qu query, uh, sorry, oh, use only this schema and start directly with the query. So this is the system prompt. So you can play around with the system prompt to improve upon how your query will get generated. Okay, so this is that part. So this is creation of the system prompt. So I've created the system prompt called SQL generation prompt over here. Okay. Now, uh, just to look at the ER diagram for this particular uh, database. So you can see the ER diagram over here, how various, you know, for example, how an order is connected to the customer, to the staff, to the store, to the order item, from the order item to the product, uh, to the category, to the stock, to the brand. Right. So you can see these various connection in this relational database. So why uh, do I need to look at this? For example, now I can ask a question like, you know, uh, I can ask a question like, uh, give me a list of stores where a certain brand of bicycles are sold. Okay. Then if you look at it, then it needs to navigate through this particular, you know, uh, certain cycle brands are stored, right? So from brand to product, right? Uh, from uh, to stocks, from stocks to stores, right? Uh, to find out, you know, in which stores, which particular brand are being sold. Okay. So this is the year diagram of this database. Now let's go to the open AI part of it. So for the open AI part of it, I'll be using, uh, you know, uh, GPT 4.0 as the model over here. Okay. Uh, actually I've used GPT 3.5 turbo over here, but I can change to GPT 4.0 also. That is not an issue. Okay. And what am I doing over here? I'm getting an API key. How do I get it? I go to profile over here and I create API key in open AI. Uh, so this is paid. So what I do is that I have to first prepay a amount over here and only then I can use this uh, APIs and then I create an API key over here. Okay. And then what I do is that I copy the API key into the secrets over here in the notebook. So that is the API key over here and here I am instantiating a client and this is how I am going to call client.chat.completions create. Okay. To uh, with the model. 
you know to uh, and then in the messages i have the system prompt and the user prompt so user prompt is a question and this will actually return the sql generation uh, generated as a response back okay so this is how i am getting the response back because i changed it i would like to run this part again okay so now all you have to do is that we have to pass this sql generation prompt and your question to open ai right uh, to this open ai client basically uh, to this method called get response from open ai api to get our response okay so this is what i'm going to do over here let's see what happens over here so it actually gives me this particular query as output okay uh, so select distinct store name from stores join stocks on store id to stock store id product on product id to you know this thing stock to product id and then uh, you know brand to brand id uh, over here and then where brand name is this so this is how it is actually connecting this particular uh, tables over here okay so from products to brand id so that is what is done over here um, so that is a connection which is done over here okay maybe this query is wrong it should be actually product id over here so i don't think uh, you know it might be able to run this but let's check okay so i can also generate another query over here give me a list of customers who bought electra um, cycles no actually this is p dot brand id so it is product okay uh, join product so it is actually correct it is joining the products table and the brand uh, table over here okay that is the join which is happening over here i was wrong initially it's the correct query okay so let's try out another query which says give me a list of customers who bought electra bicycles from stores santa cruz bikes so now i'm making it a little bit more complicated okay i am trying to find out list of customers who bought a particular brand from a particular store so it's kind of connecting multiple tables over here okay so now let's try out that particular uh, uh, query and see okay i'm still running now let's see the response yeah so this is the okay. so over here did you notice something here it gave me correctly the output like this but here it started with an sql so this can happen sometimes we need to change the prompt a little bit for getting the output in the exact format which we want okay so it says they are select distinct customer this 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 okay and it is actually connected all the tables customer it is joined customers with order order with order items with products brand stores to get the final details okay so now, now we can also verify whether it is giving correct results so what we need to do is that we need to run the query against the database so what we'll do is that we'll copy this particular query okay you can make this completely uh, programmatically also okay uh, it need not be like how i am doing now you can ask the llm to output a json you can pass the json you can get the query you can hit the database so all of these things can be done in a programmatical way as well so let me copy the query over here and just let's execute okay so it is actually given me these are the you know uh, stores where electra bicycles are being sold okay similarly i can copy the next query also and run it against uh, the database let me copy this query now you can create a fancy user interface where you want to display this sql results uh, you can play around with this particular uh, you know uh, what do you call you can change you can program around how you want to display the output to all those things okay what happens it also gives you know uh, the question which i asked was what was the question let me look at customer first name select distinct customer what was the question which i asked okay the customers who bought electra cycles from store santa cruz bikes right so it gives that customer information over here okay now what can we do is that we can have an analytics system prompt which says that you are an analytics expert look at the user question the generated sql query and results okay interpret the results and provide response in a markdown tabular form where applicable okay or as a uh, paragraph i think this should be fine because otherwise uh, you know even if it is non tabular it will just give us this thing if it is if the data can be presented in a tabular form it might present like this okay 
let us run this uh, analytic system prompt. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give the input the question, the SQL query and the SQL results. Okay. So if I were to run this, uh, so give me a list of stores where Electra bicycles are sold, right? So here it says that the query joins several tables and this is the output. Okay. You can remove all these unwanted things saying that don't give this explanation, give a simple answer and then it can give you this answer directly. So in this way, a user can ask a question to a database in natural language and get the response back, you know, from the database using an LLM. So this is the text to SQL task. I hope uh, you have understood a framework for how to implement text to SQL task. I hope this video is useful. Uh, if you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing this uh, notebook in the description of the video. Do check out. See you in another video.